Okay, here we are, I think. Uh, we're gonna talk about the Academy Awards. Oh my god, uh, it's been a long time since I've done this. Um, and uh, so here's, just to let you know about the future of this channel, I will still be making videos, but not on a regular basis. Uh, I Ideally, I'd like to try and do the monthly Oscar predictions, because I like doing that, it gives me something to work towards. Um, but I, I'm, I'm not going to do movie reviews, I don't think. I feel like I I always like have, have a lot to catch up on near the end of the year, and there's a bunch of movies I don't get to review. So uh, I, I don't know. It, it feels... Okay, basically right now at this point in my life, I'm attending Nashville Film Institute, um, which is a big deal. I'm moving and I'm, I'm taking a big step in my life. So, you could argue I don't have time to do this, but I decided I want to have some stability to focus on, and it feels good to have something else to focus on besides school, um, so this is a fun side project that I can work on at times with Oscar predictions, and it's not something that's going to take up a big portion of my time. Um, I may have other YouTube videos about other things, um, but I, I, it, I'm not going to be super active on this channel, just letting you know that's where it's, it's going to stand. So Oscar predictions, I was going to do this in May, and then I forgot, uh, and so the first Oscar predictions of the year are going to go up in mid-June, uh, which is not really ideal, but um, I got them done. And I did make a list of Oscar predictions earlier that I'm not going to reveal, because I didn't get around to like making the video proper in, in that time. I had a lot of other things on my plate. So you know what, just excuses, excuses, let's just talk about the awards. Um, I'm going to be starting, um, I'm not going to do foreign film documentary or the shorts, because um, we don't know enough about those yet. Uh, although, speaking of short films, I do want to say real quick, I made a short film. Uh, it's available to watch on YouTube right now, Captain Spirit, link in the description. Uh, we worked really, really, really hard on this uh, for a long time, so um, please support the movie. Uh, thank you very much. With that being said, here are my predictions for the Oscars. The first category is Best Animated Feature. Okay. So here's where we stand with this category. Disney has two big movies. Well, actually, they have a bajillion big movies this year. But in terms of animation, they have two big movies that are sequels to movies that have already won this category. Toy Story 4 and Frozen 2. And if Toy Story 4 were not out this year, then Frozen 2 would be the undeniable winner. Um, as it stands right now, those two movies might be neck and neck. I don't know. Word on Toy Story 4 is really, really good, and all signs point to that film winning the Oscar. But Frozen 2... Um, could contend. Uh, the trailers do look very intriguing for that movie. But there is always the chance that those two movies could cancel each other out, and if they do, um, maybe How to Train Your Dragon The Hidden World could contend um, as a way to give it to the whole trilogy. Also, Missing Link. Uh, they like Leica, and they've never gotten to give a Leica film the Oscar before, so I wouldn't hold it against them that that could happen. But, um, for the time being, in terms of nominations, I think the first four are s solid. We'll, we'll see where things where things go. And then I put Oko's in in there because it's a foreign film and it's a 2D foreign film, and they usually have at least one 2D foreign film in this category. Um, in terms of other nominees, though, Shaun the Sheep movie could contend. Uh, to the Moon will probably not be out this year. Um, but it is going to be an, an, a film adaptation, an anime adaptation of the video game that has been talked about on Twitter. Um, and it sounds simply extraordinary, but the fact that we've heard so little news about it since the announcement means it probably won't come out this year. In the incredibly unlikely event that it does come out this year, pay attention to it because it could 100% be nominated. Um, also, Lion King, we don't know if that's going to be in contention if the Academy is going to buy the, the John Favreau saying that it's live action, 
it's I think we all know it's not live action. But even if you do officially want to consider it animated, will they want to consider it for this category? Because it's basically just a shot for shot remake of a, another another movie. It's the Gus Van Sant effect. So I, I don't know. Um we'll, we'll see how it goes. We'll see when the movie comes out. I feel like I'm satisfied with the five nominees I have, although I'll probably change them very soon. Um, I'll, I'll, I won't. This won't be my final Oscar predictions. I'll make updates as the months go on. But yeah, that's all I have to say about animated feature. Uh, th this year looks surprisingly strong so far. We'll see what happens. Next up, best sound mixing. Okay, so here's where things get tricky. Um, the thing with a lot of these movies that are contending for the Oscars is I can see a scenario in which they succeed big time with the Academy Awards. There's a lot of movies that I can see a path of them succeeding. However, there's not a ton of movies that I'm 100% confident will be big things. One of those movies uh, is The Irishman. Martin Scorsese, uh, Robert De Niro, Al Pacino, Al Pacino Joe Pesci. Um, everything I'm hearing about that movie is that it's going to be a big deal. And so I put it in for sound mixing. Now, we don't know for sure that it's going to contend in the sound categories as well as the top categories, but I thought it was a safe bet for now. Uh, and also, keep in mind... Uh, the number one film I have is not necessarily my predicted winner. It could be considered my predicted winner. But more often than not, I put it number one because I'm convinced that it's going to be nominated. Because of the five, of, of all of them, it's the one I think has the best chance of being nominated. Um, and so is it. Star Wars, I think, is definitely going to contend here because it's Star Wars. And those movies always contend in the sound categories. And then 1917 is a war movie directed by Sam Mendes uh, that we'll get into more detail in future categories, but I'm predicting that movie to show up in a lot of places. Ford vs. Ferrari seems like the kind of movie that does editing and the sound categories and then doesn't do anything outside of that, and that's really what I'm predicting that movie to do. And then Cats, musical, they nominate musicals, and I feel like I feel a little bit more optimistic about this. Uh, as you'll see, it pops up quite a few places. And then the others are just guesswork. Um, I could see any one of them getting nominated uh, if the stars align for that particular movie. But we don't know what the narratives are. We don't know how the stories are going to shake out. So it's just pure guesswork at this, part, at this point. Next up, best sound editing. So this one, I think... It's a three to five overlap, and then I took two sci-fi movies and, and made the switch. I feel like this is probably fair. And I, I don't think Star Wars is necessarily going to win. I think it, it's going to be nominated, definitely. And then Toy Story 4, Lion King, I think, are in the contention. Dragon 3, I think, could contend simply because Dragon 1 was so good, and I guess Dragon 2 was good. Just... Real quick with those movies, the first one is one of my favorite movies of all time, and the second movie I hated. So I, I really didn't like what the second movie did to the first movie's reputation, and then I haven't seen the third. So yet. I probably will see it eventually. Um, but basically, there, I've heard very good things about, about the third film, so maybe it could contend in some of the minor categories. Uh, it's possible. And then Lion King, I think, could definitely contend because animal vocalizations, uh, and then cats. We'll see. I don't really know what that movie is going to be yet. I don't know the musical very well. And then Toy Story Four. Um, so I'll talk about this a little bit more in the future. But that movie is getting very, very good reviews, and there are people saying it could be a Best Picture player. And I don't know. I don't know how far it can realistically go. I'm. I have not seen it yet. I am seeing it very soon. Um, but, I mean, I had the same reaction that everybody had when they announced it. I'm like, why does this need to exist? Uh, the third movie was the perfect ending. You don't need to continue this story. And then the trailers 
were not particularly effective in getting me to change my mind. But now the reviews are unbelievable. So, okay, I'll believe it when I see it. Uh, I don't have a ton of faith at the moment, but uh, I'm curious. I'm willing to be surprised. We'll, we'll see what happens when the movie comes out. In terms of best picture, I think sound editing is always possible. It, in terms of this Oscar chances. I'm d my brain's confused. I've been at school all day. So... Let's just move on to the next category, Best Original Song. So this category is always tricky when looking at it from this far early out. Um, because it's impossible to know what movies are going to have songs, so you have to take a guess. I feel like Toy Story 4 we know will have an original song uh, by Randy Newman. Uh, and I'm not saying that's going to win, but I feel like it stands a really big chance of being nominated. And then Aladdin has the original song that people can talk about. A lot of, like, musicals that are being redone have a song added, which is why both The Lion King and Cats are included here. And then Frozen 2, obviously, is going to have original music in it. Um, also, Waves. I couldn't get a better photo of that, but apparently that's an original musical starring Sterling K. Brown and Lucas Hedges. So, it, directed by Trey Edward Schultz. And then... I included Ugly Dolls at, in at number six because that song, like, is my new anthem for life. It is a great, great song, even though I haven't seen the movie of no one, and I have no intention to. And maybe the love for the song can be enough to carry to a nomination, but I wouldn't hold my breath just yet. Uh, and then Dora and Beautifully in the Neighborhood might have songs and might contend. Uh, it's a bit difficult to tell. I have, like, a sneaking suspicion that Dora and the Last City of Gold is going to be, like, the new Paddington, in that it's going to be the kids' movie that looks terrible from far out, but then surprises everyone by actually being good. I, I don't know. I just have a sneaking suspicion about that. And then Dragon 3, I put that in there, just because why not? And then, uh, I think that's all I have to say about that, uh... Best Original Score. Okay, uh, 1917, uh, I, I forget who's doing some of these, these scores. I believe it's Thomas Newman, I think? Yeah. And then John Williams, of course, doing Rise of Skywalker. Uh, John, John Williams always gets nominated for stuff. And I don't know all the composers, but in terms of what movies are popular enough to get attention, I feel like... I feel like I know, I remember looking up who, who the composers were and I don't have them with me now. So that was part of my inspiration for why I chose what I chose. But Little Woman, Harriet, and Jojo Rabbit, I think, can contend. Jojo Rabbit, I think, feel is a big question mark because it's a very out there comedy that is by its very nature going to be controversial. So I don't see it doing terribly well on the, on the Oscar day, but I feel like it's going to be widely praised enough that it's going to get some love, and I feel like it can contend in some categories. Um, for those who don't know, Jojo Rabbit is a movie, it's sort of a comedy version of uh, The Boy in the Striped Pajamas, about a young boy, who a, a German boy, who uh, is growing up in the time of World War II and has his worldview changed when his family uh, shelters a Jewish girl, and apparently he has an imaginary friend version of Adolf Hitler. So... Just by that synopsis, you can probably figure out if this is going to be a movie you enjoy or not. Uh, and, and yeah, I think, uh, I don't know what the scores are going to be like on these other movies. Uh, we, I mean, music is usually the, the last thing that goes into a, a film. I mean, some of these scores may have not even been written yet, you know? So, um, with that being said, uh, actually, some of these scores are probably, like, yeah, we're, I think we're at the beginning of the year, but we're not. We're in the middle. We're in... It's June 19th as I'm recording this, so... Yeah, we'll... We'll see what happens. I say that a lot, but just... You know, I, I should probably speed through these a lot faster, because you can pause it. Uh, he says, but, but I'm probably not going to do that. Best visual effects. Um, I feel like... 
Star Wars is going to get on because it's Star Wars. Not saying it's necessarily going to win, but it's going to get on. Uh, Avengers is going to get on because it's the biggest movie ever. And then Lion King, I feel like, has to contend. Even if they want to consider it animated, they they probably should nominate it regardless. Uh, like, I mean, they nominated Kubo, so they, clearly everyone has to acknowledge that this is really incredible looking CGI. Um, and as someone who just rewatched the first Toy Story uh, yesterday to get ready for the for the new one, uh, I can tell you that CGI has come a very long way in twenty four years. And so, uh, I don't know. I feel like if Jungle Book won this category, so Lion King probably should contend simply by how it looks. And then Alita Battle Angel, it's sort of a wild card pick, but I feel like it got so much love from a visual effects standpoint when it first came out. I feel like that love will be spread over. I mean, the main character is CGI and doesn't really look it. So I, I, I'm curious. I, I feel like I feel like Battle Angel is going to contend. And then Cats, we don't know how Cats is going to look. We don't know how much of it is going to be CGI and how much of it is going to be real. But for now, I'm going to put it on there. And then the others, yeah, yeah, those those just contenders for now. The Irishman, I know, is going to have a lot of digital de-aging in it. Um, so that could contend. But at the same time, the Academy's seen a lot of de-aging in the Marvel films. So, and, and in Captain Marvel, come to think of it. So... Yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll, I mean, we will really see exactly how they do this. Next up, best makeup and hairstyling. So big news with this Oscar ceremony. This category is being expanded from three nominees to five nominees. That is a big, big deal. Uh, so I, I'm actually really looking forward to seeing how this category shakes out. Uh, I feel pretty okay with those five. Um, we don't really know what else is going to contend at the moment, but, you know, I feel like Hellboy had a lot of practical effects, and then Joker. I'm I'm really curious about Joker, because when I, a month ago, when I first laid out a series of potential Oscar predictions, I had Joker predicted in way too many categories, because the trailer had just come out, and they really make it look like an Oscar movie from the trailer. But I don't know how effective they're going to be at getting Oscar voters to pay attention to it. But I feel like Best Makeup, it has a shot at least to be nominated. Again, like my number one is not necessarily who I think is going to win. It's uh, who I think has the best shot of being nominated. So, next up... Uh, I just did... Yeah, I, I don't think I have anything more to add to this... Uh, Next up is Best Costume Design. I'm actually pretty confident in these. Uh, I feel like Harriet... So Harriet is the Harriet Tubman biopic. I'll get to that in more detail later. But it really does feel like it's going to be a big contender because it's a timely period piece. Uh, and Harriet Tubman is going to be on the $20 bill. So it's you know, it's relevant to our times, even if it's a period piece. And it's uh, directed by a black woman. So... You know, there's the Me Too element there. I feel like that can definitely contend in a number of different categories. Um, Little Women, uh, Aladdin, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, uh, all... I feel like they tend to nominate live-action Disney when they get the chance to, so Aladdin is going to contend. And then The Goldfinch is a really interesting movie directed by the directed by John Crowley, who did Brooklyn. Um, and the trailer makes it look like this could be a real big player. So I, I predicted the Goldfinch in quite a few categories, as you'll see up ahead. Dolmite Is My Name is an Eddie Murphy vehicle that is sort of trying to be the next Green Book that you'll, you'll see pop up further ahead. Uh, I, I have an intriguing feeling about how far that one could go. Um, don't count out Dumbo either, because, again, live-action Disney does tend to show up here a lot. Okay, best production design. Uh, Once upon a time in Hollywood. Um, I feel like they're gonna recreate a lot of old Hollywood sets, and that's gotta be enough for them for this to win best production design. That's all you really need to do to win the Oscar. 
if you ask me like which Oscar win am I most confident about at this moment in terms of what's gonna win, I'd probably say Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. That that feels like a no brainer to me. And also, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood seems like the Oscar movie that is most guaranteed to be successful. Like, you could argue that there's some Me Too talking. People are saying some controversial things about Quentin Tarantino, but he is a very beloved filmmaker, and he's making a movie with some of the most beloved people in Hollywood, and the movie is about Hollywood. So unless some major controversy comes out, I don't see how this movie could fail. And also, I think Harriet, 1917, a lot of these, I feel like, are going to contend and don't need to be explained. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to move on. Best Cinematography. So, 1917, I think, is going to win this. Uh, I, I keep saying that I don't. these aren't necessarily my winners, but then I keep saying this is going to win. I, I keep going back and forth. I'm hypocritical. Humans are hypocritical. Bite me. Uh... But I but pay attention to 1917 throughout this year because not only is it shot by Roger Deakins, um, but also supposedly it's the new Birdman where it's going to be done in one shot. Now I don't know if it's trick photography or like Birdman was, or actually one shot like Russian Ark or Victoria, but it's still a very 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 big deal, and the fact that it's Roger Deakins doing it makes me very very excited. Like, and yes, Roger Deakins did just win an Academy Award, uh, thank God, but I don't think anyone's going to complain too much with him winning a second one. I think he may even be double nominated this year because he has the Goldfinch. Um, I've also been hearing very good things about the cinematography in The Lighthouse, uh, and I think yeah, the other two nominees make sense. So Hoyt von Hoytma, who did Interstellar, is doing Ad Astra, which could be a thing, and then the Irishman... Uh, I don't know. We'll see. I feel like the, these contenders make sense. I'm satisfied with them for now, and I don't really have anything more to add, so let's move on. Best Film Editing. Okay, so a lot of this is just the movies that I think are going to be the biggest contenders um, in terms of, of, of Best Picture, because film editing is very closely associated with Best Picture. Even Harriet, uh, I feel like, is, is going to contend, even though it's the movies that are the flashiest Best Picture contenders are the ones that contend here. That's always what I've noticed. And I think, feel like Ford vs. Ferrari is going to be the outlier. Um, because there's always at least one movie nominated here that wasn't a Best Picture nominee. And it feels like the kind of movie that does well in sound categories and editing and not anything else, as I've said before. I don't think I have to explain anything else here. I'm fairly confident in these choices. So now let's get to the real nitty-gritty, uh, the big eight, starting with the screenplays. Best Adapted Screenplay, making a bit of a bold move here in predicting Toy Story 4 to be nominated. Um, I'm thinking that the movie is, is if, it's, if it's really as good as people say, I feel like the Academy might throw it a bone in screenplay but I don't think they're going to go beyond that. Uh, I feel like they're going to consider that a nice compromise, like what happened with Inside Out. But the other Tom Hanks movie, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, is definitely going to contend. That's the Mr. Rogers biopic, for those that don't know. Um, and then Loose, uh, the trailer for that looks very Oscar-worthy, uh, and the reviews are very good. So definitely watch out for that to contend. Uh, the Goldfinch, a uh, big, big movie, the Irishman, big movie. And then the other five below, I feel like could all contend for different reasons. Wendy uh, is the only one that might, for those that don't know what that is, it is supposedly Ben Zeitlin's follow-up to Beast of the Southern Wild, which has been a long time coming. Uh, we don't know anything about it, but I'm holding hope that it could be good and it could be a player. Uh, it's certainly in this category over anything else, but I don't even know like who's in it or what's it about. But I think it's a fantasy film. So pay attention to that one. And then the rest of the category, I feel like, make makes sense. And okay, let's, let's move on to Best Original Screenplay. 
this category, I feel like Tarantino is definitely going to get nominated. I don't know if he's going to win, but uh, the other nominees all make sense. But look out, there's going to be one obligatory comedy in here. And uh, I chose The Farewell. I think The Farewell is going to do very good. Um, and we saw it in a, a lot, of, we saw it get very good reviews. But Booksmart and Late Night could both pop up here as as the successful comedy. Although 8th Grade couldn't do it. So it, it it's tricky, but both of those movies could campaign very well. And of course, Us, as Jordan Peele's follow-up to Get Out, very, very good film, and a film that repeats multiple viewing, that rewards multiple viewings. So I wouldn't be shocked to see that happen. And uh, The Farewell, for those who don't know, um, Alcrafina's character uh, returns to the home of uh, her grandmother, where she finds that the grandmother is dying and the family is putting to on an elaborate, like, fake wedding uh to, so that she doesn't realize that that's why they're all gathered here. It, and it sounds very intriguing and like a, a very strong contender in that category, anyway, particularly in screenplay. You'll see it pop up, you'll see it pop up again soon in, in other categories. Um, starting with Best Supporting Actress. This is the real nitty gritty. We're in the acting categories now. Um, and Zhao Zhuzhen, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, but there's a chance that I'm not. Uh, I feel I could definitely contend. Um, but if you look at these ten women, I feel like they all make a case for themselves, at least this far out. We don't really know yet. Um, Annette Benning, uh, who is... I know that she's in an ensemble piece, but I've heard from other sources that her performance is quite good, and the film is very timely, as, as we'll see in a little bit. Uh, okay, okay. <clears throat> Annette Benning is overdue, and that this could be her chance. Uh, but there's a lot of overdue actors and actresses contending in, for different for the for different acting awards, as I'll get to momentarily. Um, I think Margot Robbie is definitely in at this point in terms of being nominated. Um, because of her role and because of what the film is, and also because of how popular she is in, as an actress, Nicole Kidman just tends to show up. Uh, she plays she plays mother figures like this is this is Lion Part Two basically, and then Octavia Spencer could get her fourth supporting actress nomination. Um, I do hear that she was very good in Ma, but that the film itself wasn't that good. So I hope she gets more leading roles to show off her chops. But I have heard very good things about her her performance as a teacher in Loose. And then we have to... You can't have the Oscars without Meryl Streep. And Meryl Streep, I hear that the laundromat is an ensemble piece and that everyone's going to go supporting. So I feel... Yeah, let's just make a supporting nomination happen. Uh, yeah, Because it, it's not going to be for Little Women. Uh, and she always has... She already has a lot of momentum because going off of Big Little Lies. So Meryl Streep... Never ever count her out. I think uh, doubt Meryl at your own peril is the quote that was going around. Although um, I would pay attention to Jennifer Hudson uh, because we, we don't know what cast is going to be like. We don't know if it's all motion capture or if there's makeup involved. But she is the one who sings Memory. That is the big song of the story. So pay attention to that. Yeah. And the others, I, yeah, Laura Dern makes sense, Janelle Monae makes sense, Scarlett Johansson plays the mother character, and she's never been nominated for an Oscar, which is a, a, incredible, uh, and I feel like she should get on for something, and maybe Jojo Rabbit will be a big thing, but we don't know. Okay, next up, Best Supporting Actor. Okay, so... I really don't know here. Starting from the bottom, Gary Oldman is... Supporting in an Amy Adams thriller vehicle, which we'll get to in a second. Leslie Odom Jr. Um, I mean, he's a very good actor on stage. Um, maybe he could let that translate with a juicy film role. Joe Pesci is Joe Pesci in a Scorsese movie, so he could contend. Taika Waititi is playing a comedic version of Adolf Hitler, which 
makes a nomination unlikely, but oh so intriguing if he does it well. And then Jonathan Price is playing Pope Francis in The Pope. Um, the movie apparently is going to be about Pope Benedict, um, with Price in more of a supporting role, but it feels like more of a co-lead if it's about like the passing of the torches. So pay attention to that. I saw a few people say he was very close to being nominated last year for The Wife. He is definitely a very beloved actor. And he's never won an Oscar, so, like, it's possible. It's very... Wait, wait, wait. Price plays Francis, yeah. Price, Price plays Francis. Now, Robert Pattinson, I think, is definitely possible to be nominated. I think the movie is going to be a big Willem Dafoe vehicle, and Pattinson could ride Dafoe's coattails. Also, Pattinson has a, is, is very hot right now um, with the news of him being in... Uh, being the new Batman, and also being in Christopher Nolan's next film. So, watch out for that. Jeffrey Wright, I feel, is is also hot off of Westworld, and his role in The Goldfinch is said to be very good, and he looked very good in the trailer. And then there's the three that I feel like are definitely going to contend. Pacino and Pitt, I don't think I need to make a, a case for. I think the case, they speak for themselves. But Matthew Reese. I'm not necessarily saying he's going to win, but he does have a lot of love off the Americans, and his role, from what I understand, would be, this would be category fraud, this would be co-lead, because apparently the story is actually told from his perspective as he meets Mr. Rogers and has an encounter with him. But obviously Hanks is going to be pushed to lead no matter what, and so I feel like, I don't know, Reese just makes sense to me as a nominee, I... And I don't, neither Pitt nor Pacino scream winners, so I put Reese in number one spot for now. Um, I'm satisfied with these, with these four, with these five men. I'm satisfied with my predictions in this category. Let's talk about lead actress now, because that is a doozy. So, first of all, like with many of these categories, six through ten would be a great lineup all in their own right. Um... In the case of Alfie Woodard, in particular, I, the role is very, very, is very, very juicy on paper, but the director is not very experienced. So I question uh, how successful the film will be. It could surprise, you never know. Kate Blanchett, part of me is screaming to include Kate Blanchett simply because people who have read the book say that the role will be undeniable. Um which is exactly what I said when I read the book Room and was screaming about Brie Larson and no one listened to me. So maybe Blanchett could contend. Definitely pay attention to that. But, okay. First of all, Cynthia Revo, I feel like, is in the best position to win as of right now because she's playing Harriet Tubman. She's a very well-liked actress and she has... Or Tony, I think she might have Grammy, Emmy, Tony. So she's very close to EGOT at her young age. She's like becoming a big star, and she's playing a super, super juicy role in what may be a super big film. So Arivo, like, definitely keep an eye on her. She's the favorite from this far early out. Saoirse Ronan, although she's a beloved actress, she's always... She's already been nominated three times, and she's playing a very juicy role in Joe March. Winona Ryder was nominated for playing the same character back in 1994. So pay attention to her, definitely. I could see a situation where she comes out from behind and takes it. Aquafina, I feel like, is going to make a very strong case. People like it when a comedic actress uh, goes for a drama. And I feel like she's a big star right now in the film is a big deal, not going to contend. Amy Adams. Every year, I wonder if this is going to be Amy's year. I want, I seriously thought about having Amy be number one, but then I'm like, we do this song and dance all the time. I'd love if, the, if this was Amy's year, but I don't know how baby the role is. It is, feels very much like Girl on the Train. Uh, if, it, if it's good, then I'm very, very happy, but... I don't know. I really, really want Amy to win an Oscar, but I don't know if this is the right year for it. Especially considering Lupita Nyong'o in Us. Lupita Nyong'o, I'm currently predicting to be the sole nomination for the film. Um, 
but she is so darn good in that movie, and she should be in contention to win. We'll see what happens. Like, after Tony Collette's snub last year, the Academy doesn't particularly like horror, but they did really love Jordan Peele's last film, so I don't really know where to, where it's to stand on this. Uh, we'll see how many people still remember the movie uh, when it comes time for the Oscars. But the fact that there's no other big movies from the first half of the year to contend... Because usually there's at least one movie from the first half of the year that people are talking about because it's to the test of time and it hasn't been uh, for forgotten. And, and like it's, it's some form of variety. So for that reason, I think Us can contend in uh, several categories, but I don't know how well it can contend. And I feel like Lupita Nyong'o is certainly a force to be reckoned with. Okay, so that's Best Actress. Now, Best Actor. Okay, this category... So, right off the bat, I'm gonna start from the bottom. Ben Affleck, his performance, um... I, I, I'll copy it. His role sounds really, really juicy on paper. Um, I, he has yet to earn an acting nomination, uh, which is intriguing. I feel like he could certainly contend, uh, but we'll see how the movie does. Joaquin Phoenix, oh, he looks really, really good on the trailer, but at the end of the day, this is a comic book movie. Also, fun fact, my number 11 uh, in this lineup was Robert Downey Jr. for Avengers Endgame, and it really hurt to leave him off. I feel like there's definitely a road for him to be nominated because he gave so much of himself to this franchise. Uh, and his performance is really, really good. Like, I I watched all of the MCU movies leading up to Endgame, and I am Team Tony, guys. You can come at me if you want, but I am Team Tony all the way. He is, he's a great character, and Downey Jr. acts the part phenomenally in every single movie, and I think he deserves something. But anyway, Ian McKellen, I've heard good things about his performance in The Good Liar, um, and he's... An older actor who they haven't gotten around to rewarding, so I could see a scenario where he is an unexpected victor. Antonio Banderas, heard very good things about him. He won an award recently, and he's the kind of actor who, it wouldn't shock you for him to win an Oscar, um, but he hasn't really given that many Oscar-worthy individual performances in the past. And then Anthony Hopkins, mm, he, he was so close to being on the five. Um... I feel like he could get on, but we'll have to see how well the movie does. In terms of this top five, I feel like Eddie Murphy can contend. We saw if Don't My, Is My Name is truly going to be the next Green Book, then Murphy has to be considered a, a, a potential contender there. And, and I mean, he was, everyone really liked him in Dreamgirls, and we know he can act. He hasn't been in anything in a while, but. I'd be really interested to see what he does in this role. I feel like you should watch out for him. They, the Oscars love when comedians do drama. And then... So Tom Hanks obviously hasn't been, hasn't been nominated since 2000. Even though he's given so many great performances since then. We've had the song and dance before with The Post and Bridge of Spies and Saving Mr. Banks. And uh, of course, who could forget Captain Phillips? Um, but... Ah, uh, he is like, he's playing Mr. Rogers. I feel like the movie's going to be a big deal. And I feel like he's going to be a big deal. And people love Tom Hanks so much. I feel like people are, sure goodwill alone has to compel them to make this nomination happen. And, okay, so real quick, I feel like De Niro and DiCaprio both individually make a lot of sense as nominees. But I don't know if I see a scenario where they win. I think De Niro maybe because he's older. And hey, why not give him another one? Uh, DiCaprio, I feel like, is going to have to work a little bit harder to get a second Oscar. Because they, they finally gave his overdue one. Like um, He's like, are you kidding? What's, gonna, what's it going to take for me to win a second one? Like I already ate bison liver. What more do you want? But in terms of... Okay. I put, I put Willem Dafoe at three. Because I think there's a good chance that he doesn't get nominated. But I think there is a significant chance that he wins. He is a very beloved actor. Um, and he has not... he He's received 
three, no, four Oscar nominations, two of them in just the past two years. So I think the Academy is itching to give him one, and the movie has received very good reviews from what I understand, so like, watch out for this. I think that it could happen. Um, but I'm not bold enough to put him in number one just yet because we're not entirely sure how this is going to play out. And we don't know how well the movie is going to do outside of him. So just keep it in the back of your mind as something that could happen but isn't a sure thing just yet. Best Director. Now, I don't know what to say about this. I feel like Scorsese, Tarantino, uh, and Mendy's all make a lot of sense. Uh, and then Cassie Lemons can be the token diversity pick. Uh, although there are other opportunities to nominate women and people of color if you look down below. And then John Crowley is the fifth nominee. And I don't know. I feel like these... Watch out for Mariel Heller, though. I, I feel like... I don't know if the Academy is bold enough to have two women nominate for Best Director in the same year. But... Mm. Watch out. And I don't really think I have anything more to add to, to that. Uh, I feel like these ten make sense. And with that, I'm moving on to the big category of Best Picture. Now, I've talked about all these nominees individually. I think the report, I don't know too much about that one, but it's, it's said to be very timely, and Adam Driver and Annette Benning are in it, so I, I think it's getting good reviews from critics. It's weird to start like this at this point because we've getting almost all of these movies have been seen, so we're getting word on them and we know like what we're gonna get into. I do feel like okay, one thing that I want to specify: I made the decision to not put Toy Story four on this list, even though I hear it's very very good. And a lot of that is just, I have been burned too many times at this point. I strongly defended Inside Out, and then I strongly defended Zootopia. Uh, I, both of those years, I really thought that they could get in. And then, when I saw Coco, it was too late in the year that I already knew it didn't have any chance, even though it was a phenomenal film. And at that point, I was like, oh, the Academy just doesn't get it. And the system is so heavily stacked against animated films. I would love to be wrong. I would love for Toy Story 4 to be the one to change it. But I just don't know if it can happen. I. So that's why I didn't predict it. I'm just sort of hedging my bets here. Because um, it's one of those scenarios where I kind of want to be wrong. And I don't want to... Like, wish for something too much. Although, we're still, we still got a long way to go before the Oscars. Like, I could change my mind a lot, and we'll see how well the movie does. I'll definitely be rooting for it, if it's good. I'm seeing it very soon. And outside of that, I don't know what else to say. I feel like The Irishman is probably the safe pick right now for Best Picture, because it is Martin Scorsese, and because it stars so many older Hollywood actors, um... And there's a lot of old Academy members who might feel like if the film is, is surrounding such such old actors, I feel like it's going to involve themes of mortality and death and knowing when you've reached your limit, which I think is going to resonate for a lot of Academy voters. So it's for that reason more than any other that I have The Irishman at number one, although anything can happen between now and the Oscars. There's a long, long time so, we'll see what happens. I feel like all of these movies can contend. All of these movies have a lot of things. The last thing you want is the only movie I don't think I ever really mentioned, uh, and that's D. Reese is doing it, director of Mudbound, uh, which is it, a little bit intriguing, but I'm not sure it has. I'm not sure if it can go the distance. There's a lot of movies out there that sound intriguing, but I'm not sure about. Uh, and ultimately, it's just a shot in the dark. That's what this this is. So I I hope that cleared things up for you. Uh, it probably didn't, but just got a long way to go before the Oscars. Uh, let's, uh, I'm definitely very excited to watch what happens. Uh, thank you, and goodbye.